Hi there. So today I'm going to be working on pruning back my uh, little lime hydrangeas and possibly my limelight hydrangeas. Um, my little lime hydrangeas are right here in my front walkway. I absolutely love these plants. They're such a great flowering shrub plant and they do really good right here in my walkway. They get about like three to five feet tall and I like to keep them around like four feet. That's how I kind of prune them, but I prune them so that uh, there are more smaller blooms. Um, I know a lot of people that have these plants, they're going for like the big, huge, giant blooms, and I don't necessarily like that look. It's it's pretty, but um, I like the like more daintier looking blooms. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Um, I think it looks a little better, uh, and then also, um, I don't have any issues with the stems like breaking or dropping or sagging or whatever if we get lots of rain. Um, I just don't have that issue with the smaller blooms. So I prune them a certain way to get that effect and I'll show you how I do that today. Now with this pruning method, uh, you do have to come in like every couple years or so and really prune back all of the scraggly super weak dead uh, stems in which I'll have to do that today. So let's get started and I'll show you how I prune back my little lime hydrangeas. This is about the time when I start pruning back my hydrangeas. When I start seeing this new growth on here um, and I probably could have done it a little bit sooner than this but you guys we've had the craziest most whack weather here in Michigan. It was literally snowing yesterday. So I've been trying to wait until all the cold weather leaves us hopefully uh, before I do this. They should be fine if I would have done it sooner but there's other things that I could have been doing so I was like eh I'll just I'll just leave it and wait. So we're gonna do it today. Basically what I'm gonna first do is go take off all of these dead blooms from last year and what I'll do is I'll come in and cut it right about before that one right there. So I'll make a cut right there and then what will happen is it will send energy into these two new sprouts and these will grow two really cute tight small blooms. So first I'm going to come in here I'm going to cut this whole plant back the entire thing and then I'm going to go in and only cut off the ones that are probably like super straggly like that okay so we will show you what I mean here down by, I don't know, about a third. You can see compared to that one, it's about a third has been taken off. Now, what I'm gonna do next is go in here and get rid of all these uh, really, well, that one you can see is already, it's just broken. Uh, I'm gonna go in here and cut off all these like dead, you know that one's obviously dead it didn't make it to the winter uh so i'm gonna come in here and you know clip that back let's see whatever else i see is dead um like all these little tiny ones i'll cu cut cut all this off i'll just be coming in here and cutting all these little tiny scraggling ones that are in here i'll uh, follow it down to the bottom there and cut it at the the base. So then what that's going to leave me with is a bunch of littler stems that are going to produce more blooms for me that will just be a little bit smaller instead of less large blooms that are going to make the stems fall over if we get any sort of wind or rain. So yes, yeah, so right now I'm going to work on going in and cutting back all of the really super straggly ones that really aren't really doing much for the plant. Thank you. 
Oh, I have to be really careful because there's a robin that laid a nest in this tree right here. Um, there was a dove, a pair of dove that, doves that laid a nest in this tree. And I saw one day, I'm not sure what was going on, but the two robins came in and like scared off the doves. And so the doves are gone now. Their white eggs are gone. I don't know what happened to them. And now there's a nest with blue eggs in there and a robin keeps flying in and out. So I have to um, be careful not to disturb that. But anyway, back to the hydrangeas. <laughs> so this is what I ended up with. Um, it's about, like I said, one third smaller than what I have these two at. And then I also came in here and trimmed back all like the kind of scraggly ones that weren't really doing much for the plants. This is all set for now. And now I'm just gonna come in and work on this one. This one has a lot I see I'm gonna have to prune back like little scraggly bits in the middle. And this is just what happens when you prune it this way. After a couple years, uh, those little tiny ones just need to be completely cut off. I'm just gonna go in here and find a spot and I'll probably take it down, let's see, to here. And I just cut that off. All right, so these plants here, these are panicle hydrangeas and they just bloom on uh, new wood. So all that means is literally wherever you make a cut, I'm gonna go down and cut right here. So wherever I cut it, when I, the stem that I leave, it's gonna produce two new shoots on either side of that cut. And then that's where you're gonna get your bloom from. So that's all that means. And I'm not, I'm not trying to like teach anybody anything. I'm not trying to tell anyone how to prune their hydrangeas. This is just what I do. Someone could be being, saying like, oh no, don't do that. That's horrible for your plant. <laughs> Um, you, you never want to turn it that way, but I have been doing this for, I don't know, about four years now and I like it. I like it a lot better and like I said, I don't have to worry about the, it's hard to, t it's hard to talk and prune at the same time. <laughs> I don't have to worry about the plant, um, you know, falling over in a wind or rainstorm and just going in. I'm kind of just packing back a third of it to start. Literally all I do. And then uh, we'll go in and get a more precise trim on it, get rid of all the scragglies. And I love these uh, clippers. They're like a ratchet clipper. My mother and father-in-law got them for me for Christmas one year and I love them for pruning hydrangeas, especially my little lime and limelight hydrangeas because sometimes the stems are, well, a lot of times for the regular limelight hydrangeas, the stems are super thick and I can't prune them with my regular um, Velcro pruners. So uh, these have like a ratchet detail on them and it, it latches right there and I think it'll click like two or three times and you can get through like a pretty good size stem. Yeah, I'm just going through and doing just a rough cut just to take the plant down by about a third of its size that it is right now. I'll go back in, like I said, and kind of get more precise on getting all the dead, scraggly, weak stems off. And you really can't hurt these plants. I first started pruning this. I pruned it way back by about like two thirds and it came back just fine. Um, and you can prune it any time, really. You can prune it in the in the fall or the spring uh, because since it blooms on the new wood, uh, you're not sacrificing any blooms that would be, you know, setting for the springtime. I 
And since I have been pruning it like this for a few years now, uh, like I said, it is time this year to go in and do a really good clean of all the str straggly bits. And I won't have to do that every year, just like I found every couple years or something like that. All right, so that's about, you know, that's a nice good trim there. So now, like I said, I'm gonna go in here and find all the spots that are dead and just pack those back. The stems that really aren't doing much, take it all the way back to the bottom if I need to. And that will give the plant a little bit more air to grow. I might need to take that one off actually. I don't normally take that big of a one off, but you can see I've already cut it in like three different spots over the years, like there, there, and there. And I just thought, you know what, I'm just gonna start over and cut it right there. So that will produce two brand new ones. And that is because I've been cutting it like this for quite some time. Like I said, I'm not a professional or anything like that. I literally, I like to kind of push the envelope with things. And uh, I like to, you know, read about the plant and see what it requires. And then I, I like to, uh, test it out for myself and see what works for me in my garden. And this has been working for me for the last several years. So we'll see. I'm just gonna finish up cleaning all the scraggly bits and we'll get to the third one. ended up cutting these back a lot more than I usually would. That's just because for this last several years, I've been um, pruning basically each individual branch. And so that has created a lot of skinny, weak stems that I did have to this year come in and um, hack back completely. So hopefully next year I won't have to do that. But anyway, I thought this is pretty cool. Uh, this plant right here kind of threw out a runner or reseeded another uh, little lime hydrangea. I've never had that happen on a panicle hydrangea before, but I'll show you. I dug it up, it was right next to it and it's got its own little root system on it and everything. It's its own little plant. So I'm gonna uh, prune this up and plant it somewhere, I don't know, in my garden but I think I'm gonna leave it in its spot for right now until I find uh, another spot for it, but I thought that was pretty neat. It kinda grew right here next to the plant, so I'm gonna put it back in this hole. We'll cover it back up. I'll try to remember that it's here and go plant it somewhere else. There's one more thing I wanna show you. It looks like there may be a cane borer in my plant. They basically have wintered over in some of the canes and some of the stems, and I need to cut those back uh, ASAP just because I don't want it to keep going down to the uh, root, the base of the plant and kill off even more. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. Right here you can see there's black in the middle of there. So I'm basically just gonna keep cutting back until I see healthy, uh, a healthy stem. Okay, you can still see it's black in there, so I'm actually going to cut this whole thing back. And it's still bad. So I'm going to keep going down the stem until I can find how far this cane borer ate through my stalk here. And if I have to go all the way down, 
you know, it's just what I'm gonna have to do. Oh, we're getting a little better, but I still am gonna go a little further. Nope. Okay, we're getting good. So you can see there's no black in there. Uh, and this was the last one I cut. So the bug, he went through there, but it's still pretty good. So um, I'm going to go around. I did see a few more other sections like that that I'm gonna have to investigate. Over here, I've got a couple. You can see one there and right around there. So I'm just gonna go down a little bit. Let's go back over to this one. And unfortunately, I'm just gonna have to keep going down until I find where this bug has quit boring. Still not good there, so. I really don't wanna have to cut that stem off, but. I'm probably gonna have to I have to come down even further because uh, this one is infected here. Oh, still brown. I'm gonna go down a little bit further. Man, this is so frustrating because okay, there we go. That's better. See, he didn't make it that far, so this is healthy. All right, there's another one right here. I'm just gonna go down a little bit. <laughs> nope, still gotta go down further. All right, so you can see that is just fine. There's the evidence of the cane borer, and I cut it down a little bit more, and there's the healthy growth, so we're good to go on that one. This is frustrating because uh, you don't really know that this is happening until you get in and see it after it's already, you know, done. It's literally on the inside and you can't see it until you cut it and you're like, holy crap. So um, it's very important to investigate and unfortunately you have to cut down all the way to where you see, you know, the good growth, the healthy growth in there and then uh, you're good you're good to go. Well, <laughs> oh, there's always something going on in the garden. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting to run into that cane borer damage that I did. And as I was getting into each plant, there was a lot more that I found uh, that I didn't see originally. And so I ended up having to cut, cut each plant back pretty severely and uh, a lot more severely than I normally do. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not too concerned about it. These plants are very, very hardy, strong, uh, sturdy plants, and they pretty much can take anything you throw at them. Um, the only thing that I might have to forfeit this year is uh, a lot of blooms. I ended up having to go down so far on a lot of the stalks that I went past like the bloom set that was already put out on the stem. And so, um, the plant should be fine. Like I said, the roots are fine. The plant is fine. Um, but this year I just might not have as many blooms as I normally would. So it will just take it like a full season to kind of rejuvenate and bounce back from the pruning job I just did on it. But um, it's kind of ironic. I came on here to show you how, uh, how little I pruned my plant so that I can get tons of small blooms on it and then I ended up just hacking it back more than like a normal person probably would <laughs> because of the damage but I had to get that damage out of there because if you don't go back you know to until you find where the black is gone then it can go all the way down into the root of your plant and it can kill your entire plant so I am glad for that but anyway, um, I think that sometimes in the garden, when these kinds of things happen, it's important to stay positive and just chalk it up to um, a great opportunity to uh, learn something new.
you know, um, I've never ran into this before. I've never had this issue before in any of my plants, in my roses, my hydrangeas, any sort of um, shrub that has a woody stem. I've never seen this before. So now I know how to identify it for future. Um, now that I've seen it, I can kind of try to be aware of it and I can totally, when I go over and do my limite hydrangeas, I can uh, make sure I'm looking out for that as well and trying to get it uh, before it gets as bad as these little limes were. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that this video was, I don't know, informative, I guess, or maybe it makes you feel like you're not alone out there if you're dealing with the same issues. Uh, you got a friend in me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do truly appreciate it. And it's going to be a great spring and a wonderful summer. So we'll see you soon. Bye.